I just talked to the town manager and uh, he recommends we get this uh, untreated salt for $78 a ton. But clearly he said it's less uh, 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 corrosive, but that's $10 a ton more than the amount of salt we use. Well, we use some of both. We use some of both, so we want to, we want to accept this shit from carbon. Yeah, well, I, I guess the untreated is really important. No, but we use, we use both. Oh, okay. All right. They were the only vendor that responded. So, then the sand. So the state sand and gravel has uh, got the manufactured sand for 203513 a cubic yard and D&D excavating uh, for $12.50 a ton, uh, 50 cents a ton. I say we, that's the screen sand. Screen sand, yeah. Well, we mix it with manufactured sand from the state. Yeah. Okay. Upon his recommendation, I make a motion we approve these prices. Motion has been made. Second. Uh, seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Um, this, is, this is Jill, and I have a question. Are we suggesting that we buy sand from both suppliers? Well, we mix the manufactured sand with the regular screen sand. Uh, the reason is that the regular screen sand sometimes balls up in the sander. And with mixing it with the manufactured sand, uh, that's a more you know, coarser sand and it's coarser, just a rock product. And uh, it lessens the uh, chance of uh, sanders plugging up. And it seems to do a better job staying on the ground on the roads afterwards. A lot less waste. Okay, I understand. And who are we going to buy the screen sand from? D&D uh, &D excavating in uh, Patland. Thank you. Any, Thank you. any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Uh, citizens come people here tonight that would like to speak yes we didn't make it on the agenda <laughs> so we're gonna fit you right in now we much appreciate it all right but shall we stand or you can be very comfortable oh, we <laughs> like comfort so Rick Kendall superintendent at Marsh Billings Rockefeller <laughs> National Historical Park and Christina Martz deputy superintendent and uh, we just wanted to come tonight to uh, provide the select board with an update on uh, activities that were undertaken in the first year of our cooperative management agreement that we signed uh, with the town last year uh, uh, and presented to the select board last year, as well as to provide an update on uh, what the 2020 uh, year will hold for, uh, for that agreement as well. I will start with the uh, uh, overview of the last year and then Christina will talk about uh, next year's uh, efforts. So last year with the uh, cooperative management agreement we uh, uh, managed to do a, a lot uh, in a what seemed like a very short time. The, the year went by quickly. Um, we uh, helped to fund the Mountains and Rivers Forever Camp which is a, uh, a day camp that uh, that happens at the park that uh, covered two teachers as well as 15 students for seven days, uh, which is a great service to uh, parents who are trying to figure out what to do with their students during, or their, their children uh, during times when the school is closed. Uh, it helped to uh, fund a crossing guard for the uh, uh, National Park Billings Farm Crosswalk uh, during some busy fall weekends. Uh, it also helped to uh, fund a uh, participation of, of five people, including uh, park staff as well as community members, uh, in a workshop called Balancing Nature and Commerce in Communities with Public Lands and National Parks. 
that was a it was put on by the conservation fund is that right in uh, in West Virginia and Woodstock was one of the uh, few towns that uh, sent a delegation down and, and the uh, cooperative management agreement funds helped to, to fund that as well and that actually served as a springboard uh, for launching the park run events that have been happening every weekend at the park uh, this year uh, as well as uh, you know the uh, uh, reinvigoration and launching of uh, the Community Day at Billings Farm and Museum um, and uh, the uh, sort of came out of the uh, community visioning process that has been ongoing as well uh, and then also finally we, we uh, use the agreement to hire three interns uh, that help support the partnership between the park uh, the National Park and the Billings Park uh, lands as well those uh, interns helped assist with community events like Bookstock and Trek to Taste, Forest Festival, Art Fests, uh, and help promote uh, regional trails, or the trails with uh, various regional events, and completed a variety of stewardship projects, not only at Billings Park and on the National Park lands, but also at the East End and Mount Peg as well. Uh, they helped organize our annual Youth Summit, which pulls together youth from uh, all over uh, the sort of greater Woodstock area. Um, and uh, uh, led a couple of different work days on both the Faulkner Park lands, the National Park lands, and uh, various public heights, uh, public heights, and uh, supported a variety of school programs in the uh, in the Woodstock schools as well. So it was a very busy and productive year, uh, and we're looking forward to uh, the next year of agreement that, or the next year of the agreement that uh, Christina will talk a little bit about now. Yeah, so since this past year was so successful, we're very much looking forward to continuing uh, the partnership work into the uh, coming year. And we have funding to continue to support the Mountains and Rivers Forever Camp for local students and working with two teachers. And of course, the crossing guard with the local police, which we greatly appreciate their support for. And then the trails partnership work. And the work with the Trails Partnership has been so successful um, in a collaboration between the National Park and the Town Parks that the Green Mountain Club is also very interested in partnering with us to deepen and expand uh, that work in the, the coming years. So we're in conversation with them, uh, um, with Allison Clarkson from the Billings Park Commission, in a three-way partnership that would uh, add additional skills and capacity to continue the work that the interns uh, have been doing, but step it up at a, a higher level in terms of trails work planning, um, and organizing projects, supporting volunteer work days, working with school groups, and helping with uh, events and, and programs. So we see that as a win-win across the board in addressing some of the great mutual benefits of our integrated trail systems here in Woodstock. Good, thank you. Yeah, so with that, if there are any questions, we'd be happy to question. take a stab at them, but... Uh, just a question on funding, um, looking at when John Hollowell was um, brought on as the new president of the Woodstock Inn and he, his whole vision was to do more with the inn and the foundation. Are you finding that you're getting financial support for your endeavors from the foundation? We do receive financial support from the foundation because they do hold uh, an endowment that was set up by the Rockefeller family. Um, the, the foundation is not necessarily a, uh, uh, or has not traditionally been a fundraising organization that has gone out and, and sought additional funding. They, they manage the funds uh, on our behalf. Uh, but we also believe that you know, the foundation's success and the Woodstock Inn success, that rising tide, you know, lifts all boats and, and we you know, fully expect that we will uh, see additional you know, visitors coming to the park as well as uh, um, you know, additional cooperative opportunities between those entities. Anything else? Any questions from the board? I have one question. When you said the um, three parks, you mean Marsh, Bellings, the Bellings Park, that's the Woodstock part of it Correct. and the Green Mountain Park Association. Green Mountain Club. Green Mountain Club. Yeah. Thank you. They manage the section of the AT that crosses. Oh, right. The Out there. So, yeah. North, the very north part of Woodstock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? I have none. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Yeah. So we'll be yeah. back in the spring to um, have an agreement uh, completed or 
Well, the agreement that we signed last year is good for five years, and so we figured we would come, and in the interest of using your time uh, most wisely, that we would give you an update on the previous year and then talk about what we were doing uh, for the future year. So we're securing this agreement until about 2023? 2023, yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Old business, uh, regional energy coordinator position, a request to include the uh, F in, in FY 2021 budget for uh, uh, a regional energy coordinator's position uh, for $37,000. Uh, is Nick here or somebody to speak on behalf of that program? You know, he was here I'll last week. <coughs> I'll, I'll speak if Nick is not here. Nick is, Nick not, is here. not You know what I'm wondering, Jill? Last week he was here for the trustees meeting, which started at 7. I wonder if he has. He knew it was at 7. Oh, he knows it's at 6. Okay. Okay, Jill. I think so. Yeah. But let's start. All right. Okay. So, uh, a few months ago, Nick came presented the idea of. Uh, several towns coming together <coughs> to employ a regional energy coordinator and since he made that proposal he has um, put more specifics on how the different towns would contribute to the um, the team. So the purpose of employing such a person would be to have an energy coordinator for Woodstock <coughs> a position that we can't afford full time, but we could afford as a shared resource so that we can <coughs> gain the savings and advantages as Hartford does by employing their energy coordinator. So the things we would expect to get from such a person would be making sure that we have the most energy efficient results and most grants for construction of new buildings or renovation of old buildings. We would expect them to help us monitor that we are getting the promised savings with the investments we've undertaken, like the new town hall boilers. Um, they could help us make some of the behavioural changes that are necessary to um, reduce energy consumption in that all of our municipal buildings. They could help us create a transportation plan. Oh. And they could uh, gen generally help us with more weatherization and getting more renewable energy used in new buildings and renovations throughout the town. Thank you, so Jill. So the thought I'll... is that this... Go ahead, Jill. Yes? No, no, you go ahead. Okay. I just discovered that someone's in the audience tonight that I knew was coming tonight. And um, the gentleman from Hartford is here, but I want you to finish your... Part first and then. Okay. Oh, good. Thank All you. Right. So Jeff can Jeff can answer questions about the type of project he's done. Um, so the second part of this, this uh, proposal that is important to talk about is that we believe that a shared resource between seven towns is going to be effective in this position because many of the um, so much of the work that the person done, does is going to be very portable between the towns. So for example, when this person um, uh, learns how to make buildings the most energy efficient, then that's immediately trans transferable to the different towns. If we start learning about hybrid vehicles to purchase, again, we're going to learn once, and the same information can go to the seven towns. So it's not that we're going to get a seventh of this person. It's much more that we're going to get a, um, a very good share because we'll all be doing similar projects. So the way that the um, that Nick had divided the um, the salary of the person, salary and cost of the person was to use the town equalized, the, the equalized education <coughs> grant list because that's comparable between towns. And as one of the larger towns, that means that Woodstock would be contributing 31% of the cost for this person. 
So we can discuss those things more, but just to be clear on what we're asking for in the timeline, we're asking that today we participate, we agree to participate in the joint service contract um, and make room in our budget for that estimated cost of 37000 <coughs> And then in March, we pass that budget, and then that will allow two rivers to draft a service contract. And then after each town has had their meeting day, then we can start um, reviewing and reaching agreements on that service contract with two rivers to begin a position in July 2020. Okay, um, Jeff Martin from Hartford is here, gentleman right here, right. and um, as Jill said, he's going to uh, give us an overview of what has taken place in Hartford. Why don't you come up here where we can all see you and you can also Stay talk and, and you can do whatever right. you wish. But you had a question, did you have a question first? I, I just want to speak in support of it, but if you want to go... Okay. I'm also a Woodstock resident, um, so happy to be here and... Uh, and Jeff, yep. Jeff is also on our energy committee. Yes. So uh, my role uh, with Hartford is, is to develop uh, and implement the town's climate and energy program. So um, that includes both working on municipal uh, projects uh, and also working with, with Hartford residents and business owners. Um, so a lot of the work that I've done uh, for the municipality involves um, implementing some of the, some of the recommendations uh, from some energy audits that we've, we've had done in the past. So that includes LED lighting retrofits at the police station, the fire station, installing um, heat pumps in the, in the police station, uh, working right now to install a new ventilation system for the police station. Um, also, we're looking at the town's uh, vehicle fleet. So right now we're in the process of leasing the town's first electric vehicle. Um, also want to start looking into hybrid vehicles. Um, as Jill mentioned, you know, particularly with police cruisers, there's opportunities for savings there. A lot of the vehicles uh, we learned are idling for a significant portion of the time that they're, that they're operating, particularly um, public safety vehicles. And so there's opportunities there for savings, mm -hmm. and, uh, both monetary savings as well as uh, fuel savings. Um, worked a lot on uh, renewable energy projects for the town as well, so um, worked on getting 100 and, uh, 180 kilowatts of solar for the town. Um, and with some of those projects, I'm also um, working to involve uh, nonprofits in Hartford. So we're actually hosting, one of, one of the solar projects that I'm working on right now are hosting a solar array on town property and one of the, uh, the Housing Foundation, which is a nonprofit housing agency in Hartford, is the off-taker on that project. So they're benefiting from that project because part of the position is, is as I said, um, helping Hartford residents benefit from renewable energy and energy efficiency as well. So that's on the municipal side. And then um, working with, with residents, a lot of my work is just going out, um, do, doing, you know, hosting events, talking about um, renewable energy, <coughs> Um, talking about, for example, this summer I, I did a couple events on solar for condo associations, um, button up events. I you know, you know Zach with Sustainable Woodstock is something that, that, that he's been working on here in Woodstock. Um, so I, I think maybe familiar with, with those events, <coughs> trying to get residents to weatherize their homes. Um, so it's so it's both savings for the municipality and also trying to get. Uh, people living in the town to, to save money and save energy as well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks very Thanks much. For you guys stick around for a few minutes sure. in yeah. case we have, to yeah. have a seat. Are you seat. a full-time employee in Hartford? I am a full-time employee, yep. Can I ask a question? <clears throat> Jeff, do you think that there are opportunities from a shared position to also leverage that into a d grant funding? that might Definitely. not be as accessible for just one can, municipality. Me, can I ask that you either repeat the question or ask the question that comes to the microphone? <laughs> oh, <coughs> okay. yeah, sure. I just asked if there were going to be uh, additional opportunities to leverage more grant funding towards projects because 
we're working as a consortium of towns rather than just one town. Yeah, I would, I would definitely think so. I mean, I think there would be some challenges to having a shared position, um, but I think there are also some huge opportunities like that. I think that it puts it would put put Woodstock and the region in a much better position to to leverage uh, to get grant funding. Um, <coughs> potentially also get better deals on weatherization projects if you're working, if you can do an RFP for a number of towns and potentially get a better price from a contractor to do weatherization projects. Same thing with, with looking at the vehicle fleet. I can imagine there's some opportunities like that. And can I add to that one? So one, one of the reasons for asking Two Rivers to host this employee is that Two Rivers is eligible for more grants than towns are individually. Jill, um, yes. could, could I ask you about um, the Norwich Solar um, agreement that we have, that program? What are we actually seeing for return? Are you comfortable with that? Or what do you what I have not asked, so I don't know, but and this just came to me today. Aren't we in agreement with Norwich for that solar program there? So we have an agreement with Norwich Solar Technologies, it's a private company in Norwich um, that we are buying most of our town electricity from them. Um, and and uh, we have solar panels hosted on a uh, vehicle transport company in White River Junction. And, and then the money's flow through so that our electricity is being generated by solar. And are we realizing the savings we anticipated? Or has it not been so that's, long enough yet? So the, um, the work only happened in July. Um, to transfer us to this system. Okay. But the question is a very good one because right now we don't have a resource who can monitor the difference, the changes. So we don't know whether the new boilers are actually giving us a saving versus the old ones. And that is a job that this person would actually do. Monitor our, our use and savings? Monitor. Yes. Sorry? Yeah. Doesn't say, say that. Yeah, doesn't say that. But that's one of the intentions. That that's exactly what this person would do. So volunteers have managed to do a certain amount in the time, oh, but see. we haven't been able to do this continuous monitoring that's required. Um, on the second page, Ray, where um, it has the amount, I just noticed that um, above it there are what original energy coordinator could help Woodstock with specific projects. And I think number two, um, ensuring we are achieving the promised savings with the investments we have undertaken, like the new town hall boilers. So that is included there. I did not see that either until just now. Now at the... Um, trustees meeting last week which I attended the trustees um, th they had a cons they took a consensus which was um, in support of this and pass it on to the select board to <coughs> vote um, their concern as I have the concern and Jill mentioned also is that over 30 percent of the support for this would come from Woodstock, the $37,000. And I know that the trustees were quite concerned about that, and so we, um, we have to talk about that a little bit tonight. They've, um, the trust, yes, I, can, I, can I just speak to supporting this position? Um, so we have new boilers. They're amazing. We're very happy to have them. They came in a little late. Um, but we also had an instance in July and August when uh, the boilers were pumping heat and the cooler was pumping coolant in. So 
Pentangle's energy expense was triple for July and August. And I, I believe this position would be someone that could come in and say, <coughs> okay, what's going on? I mean, I'm not asking the town to, to help us with that, but the reality is it's nobody's job to, to monitor those very nice boilers that we have and our very ancient cooling unit. So I just want to say, I think, I, I can't say enough that I think this is so important. And the way that Woodstock was sustainable, Woodstock has talked about, you know, let's be more energy efficient. Um, I worked to get the grant from Efficiency Vermont with Jill that we couldn't utilize, but we did button up certain parts of the building. Um, so I just think it, 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 it goes to our values that this is something in the largest public space in Woodstock we need to support. Thank you. All right. Do you have anything to add, Jeff? Oh, I just think that, um, like you were saying, that you know, town officials, um, town employees have so much else going on that these types of projects, which we know can be huge money savers, um, still get pushed pushed to the side just because there's so much other business that has to take place to run a town. So having someone that's focused on on energy um, can can have a, a real good payback. Jeffrey. Yeah, I wasn't at the trustees meeting last week. I couldn't attend. Um, however, uh, I've got some concerns uh, about this. Um, for one thing, I think that. I'm sorry, but I can't hear Jeff. Can you also um, push the button? Here, why don't you sit right up here, Jeff? Well, right I've got some concerns, Jill. And it has to do on a couple of levels. First of all, I think that everyone in Woodstock is very concerned about energy uh, efficiency. And a lot has been done. Zach has done a lot, and Sustainable Woodstock has done a lot. Uh, Jill, you have spearheaded things, and uh, so have other people. And I think that a lot can be done in-house. I kind of am worried about the uh, getting involved with something that's being shared amongst other towns um, that's going to cost not just 37000 but that's in addition to that, there's the travel expenses. So it's going to be closer to $40,000, I estimate per year. Um, I think we could come up with something, even if it's a part-time person, that uh, we could pay probably less than that to do, uh, to implement some of these things. Certainly our new town manager, when we have one, could be responsible for things such as Alita was talking about um, as part of their duties to make sure that our systems are working properly. And um, so, I'm not for this because I think that this is like giving up something this town is, is already doing. We've already signed on for, uh, you know, the energy that's been talked about with Norwich. Um, and we are, we've been making our buildings uh, more energy efficient on our own. And in addition, I also, as an aside, even if the select board likes this idea, and I don't think they should for the reasons I've said, I object to Woodstock paying uh, $37,000 when a town like Norwich, which has a higher population than Woodstock, is paying $7,000 less under this plan. It makes no sense to me. I don't think the education tax component is what should be used if it was being used. I think it should be the population of the town if this affects everybody in the town. Uh, and uh, those are my thoughts on this. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. Do we have some clarification on how the budget was determined? How the budget oh. was determined for, yeah, for the, for the equalized education grant list is what they say in here. Okay. What is stated in here? The equalized education grant list. And you know Woodstock is so that's quite high. So for people? You're basing yeah. that on for yes. people? Yes. And we're yes. gold. I'm uh, can I can I speak to Jeff's sure. point of employing somebody ourselves that is using a regional person? Jeff, she, this is Jill would like to address it. I'm listening. Okay. We're all listening. Okay. So um, when during the course of this proposal being developed, uh, Norwich did actually uh, look at employing their own person, and the costs were not. Uh, were just as much. I mean, they appear lower in dollars, but by the time you add the benefits, um, they start to approach the same thing. And the point about employing one person is that you can get a professional person like Jeff who devotes all his time to this. 
because what has happened by having volunteers do it, so that's sustainable, Woodstock, that's the team that worked on all of the municipal buildings work, is we, we are not there all the time and we, do, we cannot do all the work that is required. There are many, many things that we have not managed to do that are still opportunities for this town. I will also add one thing for our consideration. This, um, the motion that has been offered to us for local approval indicates that this will be voted on town meeting day. It is not our approval with putting this forward to the voters of Woodstock they will have the final approval of, for this on town meeting day. And, and as will other towns. Other, all towns will have a vote again on town meeting day. So if other towns vote against it on town meeting day and we vote for it, our ante goes up? Yep. That's correct. Correct. No. If, uh, say that again. If, if we vote... To, uh, if we vote tonight to put it on our town meeting ballot and only five or six towns approve this, is our part of that going to be more costly? Because other towns uh, voted it, against it, yes. It, it wouldn't have to be because we are voting to pay a share of a seven town agreement. And so if any town didn't come into it, we could, I would imagine that we can walk away from the whole agreement. I, okay. I, I would, quite honestly, I would rather see us take this money and put it towards an employee of the town that works directly for the town and doesn't have the interests of six other communities um, in, in their um, basket. Roger has his hand up. So, I gentlemen think, in I, the back. I think um, one thing to remember about this is, is if I'm understanding it correctly, yes, you're voting to put this on the town meeting. Then there's a contractual process you go through. If that contractual process does not come out to the satisfaction of this town or any other town, then no town, I, I can't imagine there's, there's any way that you're going to be held to this. I also think that this is a that on a, general, a broader level, the opportunity to do cooperative services in this region is going to be critical to the ultimate <coughs> financial sustainability of all of these towns. We need to look at ways to increase our efficiency, increase our economies of scale, increase the cooperation among different services, and that's only going to happen with some regionalization, whether that and this is one example of that kind of regionalization that we should be considering very carefully because otherwise we're ultimately going to price ourselves out of existence. I agree with that. Okay. Anybody have anything different? A little bit. A little bit. No. I, I want to be in agreement right here with this gentleman. But I also want to say that I'm on the energy group um, from Sustainable Woodstock. And I know that as a volunteer, which we all are, we are very, very limited as to what we can do. And I think having somebody professionally hired <coughs> to work with our town, and I think Jeff made a very good point that if you, and we've <coughs> talked about this in the energy group, that if you bring towns together, you're more likely to get more money, more likely to get a grant, more likely to get the, the, f the food to be able to do more. So as an energy group person, I would say that I am totally supportive of this, and I really feel at this time we need to have a professional person working with our town. And I, <clears throat> I'd just like to add that I think this helps check an economic development box in our community. So infrastructure can help spur growth, and it can hinder growth. And <clears throat> so I think this can help us spur growth because we can address some of our infrastructure limitations. And I also think it's a great marketing opportunity. I think it checks a box on enhancing uh, a certain type of asset that people are looking for when they come okay. to town. Thank you. I'd like to let <coughs> other people who haven't spoken. So you had your hand up first. 
Yeah, um, well, just quickly, I'd like to say that despite the great efforts of Sustainable Woodstock and, and all the other groups doing work on energy systems in town, we are still like woefully behind our targets for renewable energy adoption in town. So, uh, you know, we, we, I think this position is, is sorely needed. You know, I'm, I'm reminded of one thing as I sit here, and there are some people here tonight who were not here. In 2005, when we had the rural community <coughs> vision in 2005, and one of the um, recommendations from that was an economic development commission, which this would have some bearing on, and which has been established and is quite active now. The Energy Commission, some people have been on that since 2005, the Energy Group for Woodstock. And um, the other that is L, East End, and the, from that the park has come. So there was a lot that came from that with, that we are continuing to move forward mm -hmm. with. And with the understanding that um, the possibility of using this money for someone in Woodstock to work solely for Woodstock is a great idea, but we haven't gotten there yet. And in that, considering that we have another level of vote to go, I would move that we participate in the joint service contract, which will outlined in the Regional Energy Coordinator proposal <coughs> and budget for that amount pending final approval at town meeting. And this goes nowhere with our vote tonight unless all the people who come to town meeting and vote on town meeting go with us. So I put forth that motion. Motion's been made. Do I have a Motion's been made and seconded. And Any further discussion? Further discussion by the board? Uh, can Any I speak or is that by the board? Go ahead, just a minute. It, well, just kind of like, like um, what, what Mary said, if you guys don't vote to support this, to, to, to approve this today, as a town, the people are going to actually be paying for this stuff, we don't get a voice in that. And it's got, when listening to the <coughs> conversation here, obviously it's something that the town supports. So you should support this motion tonight, allow us to vote on it. Uh, uh, let, let the town to, to be the ones to decide on that. That's first. And second of all, when you bring the minds of many towns together, you get more ideas. So there's just benefit in numbers. Right, I would um, I'd like to see a cap on what the expenses are for mileage and direct expenses. Because um, that could, you could go from 37000 to 45000 in a heartbeat, which we're not budget, which we won't budget for at town meeting, and there should be some wording in the town meeting that if all seven towns do not agree to this, we can um, withdraw our approval. I think that sounds reasonable, Jeff. I have a, I have a question about uh, why, if, if everyone in the town wants to vote on this. Um, and many people want everyone in the town to vote on it. Why this wouldn't be on Tuesday rather than Saturday when we have a small representative uh, number of people? About petition. Yes. That's, Fine. that's a select board decision that we could make. Mm -hmm. to put that, this I know that. That's why I'm throwing, I'm throwing that out that if you want the entire town to vote on it. Rather than put it in the budget. Than, and it should be an Australian ballot article on Tuesday. That's what is that I'm what saying. you're asking? Yeah, that's what and I'm we, asking. It's up to us to make that decision. Yes, but we wouldn't. We could put that on without requiring a petition we can of that. the people. Yes, right. we can. You can just do it by Australian ballot, and then you have the uh, much larger population of Woodstock. Do you hear this discussion, Jill? Yeah, so. I do. Okay. okay. Well, that's okay. All right, so I have a motion on the floor. Well, it's been seconded. Ray wants to set a cap. And I have, Ray wants to set a cap. I want to set the cap at, at uh, 40,000. 40,000? Yeah, that gives them $2,300 to play with. Yep. 
That can all be in the special article. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the motion, the motion that we have right now is not for a special article, is it? Yeah. Uh, no, this motion is no, to support this. No, we can support do that. This. That's something that we can That's do. That's something now. that we do when we're <coughs> working on the warning and setting the budget for town meeting. Okay. All right, so I'm looking for a vote from the board to, uh, Mary, would you repeat your motion, please? I move that we participate in a joint service contract with the Two Rivers on Quechee Regional Commission as outlined in the Regional Energy Coordinator proposal and budget for an estimated <coughs> cost of 37 is here, but we're changing that to $40,000, pending budget approval on town meeting day. I second it. Motion has been made and seconded by Jill. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. No, we don't have to go any further tonight. Okay, so moving right along. Um, could I sort of say something from Kittens' comments I want to say before everybody leaves? Um, the select board has been advised by the Vermont Municipal Clerks and Treasurers Association that our clerk, Charlie Degener, has completed the requirements to be a certified Vermont town clerk. And this was established in 1988 for um, proficiency of Vermont clerks and treasurers. Charlie's only been in this position for three years and he has already accomplished the certification requirements. So I just want everyone That's to know that job. tonight. Thank you. Okay, so moving right along, new business. We have to uh, have a signature change from Phil Swanson for the uh, advisory investment advisory committee, and Jeff Kahn's name has been proposed to to do that in place of Phil. And without any further discussion, I would move that we. Uh, add Jeff Kahn to the signatures uh, for the advisory committee. I make them. Yeah. I'll second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. The ayes have. Aye. Now um, we would like uh, investment advisory committee quarterly update. Um, Jeff, are you prepared to do that? Oh, I thought Jill was doing oh, this. Oh, we have this form. We yeah, we have that this. form. We received this in our packet. I don't know that we need to go into uh, great length about it. Uh, Do you, would you like to you say anything, Jill? If you have any questions, Jill. Sure. Do you have any questions or would you like to say the high points? <laughs> the high points. Just the high points. Okay. And then I don't know where you are and what time zone you're in, but <laughs> one high point. If <laughs> anybody has questions, yeah. we'll save them. Okay. All right, so um, the Woodstock Endowment Fund has invested in three different places. It's invested in equities, bonds, and um, the Vermont Community Loan Fund. Um, the, the last quarters have been very positive. Um, the, it, the funds have gone up by 5% since last March, and now the fund is worth $1.8 million. We track where we track the performance of the funds that we're using versus the, um, the stock market averages to make sure that we're putting sensible places and we're we're tracking along with the market. So we're doing well. So it seems to us we don't need to change where the money is are invested. Okay, good job with that. Any questions from the board? Okay. So. Moving right along. Thank you, Jeff. Halloween candy donation. Our share for that is seven hundred and fifty dollars. Seems like a lot of a lot of candy. It is. Um, the dentist support. Yeah. And I also would like to mention that um, last week when the trustees met, they did approve the seven hundred fifty dollars. So you're talking eight. Fifteen hundred dollars. Fifteen hundred dollars worth of candy. Candy. 
and there's, um, a, there's a lot of a lot of kids and um, a commitment from the um, trustees that uh, they will reconsider how Halloween will work next year due to the fact that people are very concerned about the number that has increased so significantly and the danger of the, all those people on those streets on Halloween night. So, but for tonight, I move we approve 750 as allocated last year, as we've always done 50% with the village trustees for Halloween candy for High Street, Maple Street, and Gulf Avenue area, which is closed to traffic that evening, 5 to 8. Motion's been made and seconded. Seconded. <coughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor who say, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. <laughs> so, please remember there's donation barrels here at the town hall, the emergency services building, I believe at the elementary school, and anybody's welcome to put a big bag of candy in there. All right. Thank the you. The next thing is the inner local contract for police protection renewal. And I've asked uh, Frank to try to run us and explain what that's all about. <laughs> I'm almost as much in the dark as you are, <laughs> Jeremy. Um, it's the contract that you have with the Village Police Department to provide uh, certain services to the town um, for a contract price. Um, we went over this this morning. Uh, with the chief, um, and a lot of it is related to a, we pay a percentage of the call volume. That's how the budget is allocated. But uh, it's the same contract that you've signed uh, uh, in past years, uh, or a little earlier this year, because last time it was signed, well, uh, last time it was signed in January of, of the year. This is a, must be a two year contract. It is a two-year contract. <coughs> two years, Is it two or three? Last time we signed two. one apparently was 2017. Two. Yeah. Two-year okay. contract. That two year contract. Because Jeff said so. So, are we signing this again for two years? Yes. Um, so is there a typo on the second and third page at the head of the column? It says F120 for both columns. Well, it will, um, it will, it, 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 the it, beginning it, of it is the first it, day of FY, what, it says July. July. It is a typo. Oh, it, it, it is a typo. Yes. All right. Okay. We, this agreement ends with 2022? 20, um, it goes 2021. to 2021. June 30th, 2021. 2021, that's in number one down there. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, so are we keeping the contract the same for two years? Yes. July 1st, 2020. 2020 from June 21. To June 30th, 2021. 2019 to 2021. Oh, 2019. Oh, okay. All right. I move we approve the contract as submitted with um, the ending date of 20, June 30, 2021. I second it. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Oh. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Yes. aye. <coughs> now the town road and bridge standards. Uh, we need to re-adopt this as it was previously incomplete. Is that? That's, that's correct, Mr. Chairman. Apparently we sent it in without Filling in the middle of it, road and bridge standard section, answering the required questions. Um, and they picked up on it, so you need to readopt it. <coughs> so decided to make, uh, make them happy. I and how will we complete it? Are we going to complete it with yeses or no? We're we'll completed with yeses. Oh. 
You have it. I, I have the completed Beth one. Beth has the completed one, Jill. Thank you. Good. Okay. I make a motion to accept the Hoove Road and Bridge and Road standards. I'll second it. Motion's been made and seconded that we approve it. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And the ayes aye. have it. Okay. David, yes, sir. you're next on the agenda. Yes. So I'm just here to update you on the building safety order I have issued. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. But I've done an inspection of a building on 39 South Street and issued orders and so far had no contact. So we'll be moving forward with fines and may go to court. When do the fines start? Uh, the 19th, I believe. Okay. What's the safety issue, David? Uh, they have multiple violations of the vacant building ordinance, such as the covered porch structure is ready to fall off the building and it's in bad shape. The main roof is leaking. There's missing clapboards on the rear of the building. The main power entrance is hanging. I believe it's still on. Um, we're working to get those straightened out. Yeah. Sure. I did have a conversation with the mortgage company prior to this starting, and they really didn't care. They didn't so, care? Because I said I'd rather do this over the phone without all this stuff, and they said, yeah, just send me the paperwork. Okay. So, I'll but keep you informed. Is there anybody living there now? No. No. Vacant building. No. And the listed owner, uh, I sent her uh, several notices, and it, all the mail was returned. Thanks, David. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, David. Uh, so the next thing on our agenda is to determine the energy commission. <coughs> this is in line with the adoption of the energy chapter of the town plan and is necessary. Uh, who is to speak to that? Brought by Michael Brands. Oh, I thought. Oh, yeah. Let's Okay, I thought was going to talk about she it. She did. Must be she thought so too. She left. <laughs> so, what do you need from us for this? Uh, Where's the town? Hasn't put it in there. The enhanced energy. Therefore, be it resolved that the request. We're just requesting the energy planning compliance. The rock find you in compliance. That what, Frank? <coughs> You're resolving that the legislative body asked T Rock to declare you in compliance. Um, Shall I make a motion to do that? I'll I make a motion sure. to resolve that the legislative body of the town of Woodstock request the determination of energy planning compliance from um, Two Rivers of Creek T Regional Commission. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Now we get down to uh, Norman Williams Public Norman Williams Library. And the Karen, Williams Karen is here. here. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen, come forth. Come on up. Thank you. You bring a chair up. You you write by a microphone here, and I think Jill, Hi, Jill. will heal you better. Okay. Hi Karen. Thank you. Welcome. So I'm here. I'm interested in representing the town on the Norman Williams Public Library Board of Trustees. And uh, what I would envision with that is uh, I think it's important. Obviously, there's a large part of the library annual operating fund that is supported through our, uh, you know, town meeting each year in the budget. So I think to keep you informed of what's happening in the library, pressing issues, and to take your interests and concerns back and those of the town to the full board would be what I would be trying to do. So, and I see Ron the president of the library yeah? board of trustees is here this evening. Yes, sir. You have anything? To I, say? I just came to support Karen's nomination. If you have any questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, some of you uh, may are new to Woodstock, and Karen has been here about 15 years, longer than that. Uh, about that. And she was principal at the elementary school for several years and retired a few years ago. <coughs> and we're lucky she's a resident of Woodstock. <laughs> Hmm? What? Like neighbor. Neighbor. <laughs> but just neighbor. He wants me to say. Oh, yeah. I drive by his house very slowly. I'm looking for a motion to approve Karen. I would make a motion to appoint Karen White as our representative to the Norman Williams Public Library Board of Trustees. The motion's been made and seconded by John. Any <coughs> discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. You're welcome. Okay. So the next thing on the agenda is the Town Hall Building, building Committee update. A few people here this evening. Uh, Town Hall Committee update. So um, Angela and Gary Moore yeah. are on the library. Are you on? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. So I summarize? I guess she yes, can. Yes, please, Jill. Okay. Um, so we recently had a meeting, and many of the select board uh, members were there, where uh, Jay White, the architect, proposed an idea for um, uh, using the town hall a little differently. And it brought about the him proposing a contract to create a master plan for the town hall. And the idea behind the master plan is to create a vision of what the town hall could be, um, give it a timeline and cost, so that any work that we do toward the town hall goes towards this vision rather than having to be done over whenever we renovate the town hall. So the proposal is a proposal for the master plan it's not a proposal to commit funds to make the renovation, but it's a proposal that will help us get to a number that will tell us how big a project this is. Um, the architect is available to work on this project now, it starts tomorrow, and is, so what we're asking for is um, to approve the estimated cost that will run between 16,000 and 26,000 take us to this master plan by January 31st. Okay, thank you, Jill. Thank Are you. we going ahead with the engineer's proposals first? So, um, Jay has spoken to uh, the structural engineer and they have uh, agreed what work needs to be done given this proposal and they really it's putting in the those monitoring things and Frank has that email and uh, the details. So there's, so yes, yeah, the thought is to keep going with the work that they have specified. Is that from the structural engineer that um, yeah, SDS. She has coordinated SDS. with with Jay. Okay. Um, Question. I I I just had a clarification. Did I hear sixty to twenty six? Sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. That's. Thank you. That's what I heard. Like your age and mine. <laughs> so, the one thing that I don't understand and must have missed the boat on or something is the structural engineer telling us to wait three to five years for this monitoring system to confirm yes or no it's moving and then in Jay's proposal he's talking about eventual removal of the stage like that's already been sort of decided and I really didn't think that was the case. So I can speak to that because I took that question out with Jay and, and his response was that he has spoken with Katie Hill, who's the engineer, 
and she's on board with the general concepts. Um, she hadn't even considered the possibility of removing the theatre, um, but she doesn't think it's a problem, and she suggests that the monitoring work we should do on her report... Um, personally, I think that we need to get Katie. Uh, I think that I think that the way to go forward would be to get Jay going on his work and then get Katie to formalise her agreement with this because I think she needs to be involved through this project too. Why do we need an architect to do a master plan? That because we're talking about fairly major changes to the building, as he discussed, um, and, he, and he needs to identify what, how things are going to look, just as he's outlined in the proposal. Jeffrey? I'm, I'm curious, though, um, if, if we have three to five years to determine first whether the building is moving or not moving and so forth, wouldn't it be better to wait a bit and then, because if we're not, if that building st is, ends up being stable enough to continue the way it is, this building, with a stage where it is, uh, it, you would come up with a different plan for renovation, I would imagine, than what is proposed by this architect uh, who sees that gone. Uh, and so one of the reasons that um that we're involved in these discussions now is that the current theatre needs a lot of work on it um, and Penn Temple has, has previously done some work because the, the changing rooms and the green rooms at the back are inadequate for, for what is required these days. So one of the alternatives that was discussed is going ahead with those ideas and that's what the structural engineer said has to wait three to five years for. This is a totally different concept that says, why don't you make the best use of the building, of, of the main building that you've got? Yeah, the cons uh, cons uh, concern though is, if, if the amount of money, it doesn't, doesn't take $26,000 or $16,000 for anyone to look at this and not realize that what he's proposing is a massive amount of expense. Um, in terms of creating the, the third floor, just let me finish. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a big, big, big deal. And I think if it turns out that the building is stable after the time period the structure engineer said we should be waiting for, then that would change that plan considerably, perhaps based on whether people want to spend that amount of money. We're talking in the millions. I, my thoughts on this is that um, I would like to see a little bit more community uh, involvement in this as to what the community really thinks we ought to do with this building and what the use should be. Um, I haven't seen that or heard that, uh, so I think the community needs to speak up a little louder as to what the, what the use of this building is future for this building is going to be before we... Uh... So, the, so the team that, that was there on the meeting on October the 1st has actually, it is the community and has been working on this for, start for a year. There were to, some people um, there, I realize that there were, but that's a very, 16 people and some of, at least I know there were a few that were there that aren't even residents of the town of Woodstock. So, um, you know, I... I I just feel we need a little bit more time, a little more thought to, to this and see what the community really wants to do with this building in the future. This is, is a huge expense and a great undertaking and I, I'm not saying I'm against it, I just think I need, we need more input. So, so one, one thought to that is that um, none of us actually know what is what we do know is that we've had large estimates for the amount of work that needs to be done on the exterior of the building. We are currently, we have air conditioning systems that are not working and we're lucky to have got through the year with them and that's going to cost us major money. 
And every time we turn around in this building, we're looking at bills of $50,000 here and $50,000 there and $50,000 there. And we're very likely to be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on fixed work, which isn't going to take us into the future, but will just paste over what we have and keep us going for a couple of years. The thought with coming up with a, an innovative idea is that then you have some drawings, you have some costs, you have some timelines, and you can take those to the public and they can vote on whether we want to do it or not. And, when, and then when we look at our financial situation, we can say, when are we likely to be able to do this and time it into the plans that we have for the whole town. We spent $9,245 for uh, STS's uh, valuation of the rear building. <coughs> uh, and it looks to me like, other than the monitoring, uh, we really don't care much about that report from from Kate. Um, there's we do care quite a lot, but the question that uh, the, I think what we need to do is to go back to her and ask for her recommendations, if, depending on what we think we might do and when we think we might do it. So it's all part of saying, what's the big picture? Jill. Uh, she had her so one of the things that the architect said at the, at the community meetings, and I've been participating in them for a year about, um, is, is that once you have a master plan, then you have begin to have a coherent thing. You can go to grants and get grants for it and help fund it. So it's not like something that we're going to have to pay for all of ourselves. And Allison Clarkson was very confident that you know we can get a lot of outside money, grant money, for funding this. And I just think that there's also a little bit of confusion about what's going on with the back of the building and the need to wait. The, art, the structural engineer said, if you want to rebuild the stage and do any of that kind of stuff on the addition, you have to wait because we don't know how much is going to settle. But the structure of the building itself is perfectly fine and it's good. And he, the architect said it's a very sound building. So what the architect was saying was, just get rid of that, uh, the, the addition of the stage put the stage at the, you know, the rear of the building, which is sound, and then redo the, you know, the seating. So it's not like going forward with that plan, we need to wait three to five years to see if there's more settling, because the actual building itself, the envelope of the original building itself is quite sound. Can I ask a question about the air conditioning? Jill, is um, John Penny working on a proposal to um, address the air conditioning situation for the coming year? He, he is, and Frank can talk more about oh, it. Okay. Um, okay, Frank. Jill said you can talk more about it. Because I have another question that I don't know a whole lot about, but I've been hearing. Well, my last conversation with John was dealing with the compressor in the front of the building, which is non-functional, uh, non the amount of money that was involved there, and I asked him to go back and take a look at the, the, uh, the entire system of the building before we make a, a decision on spending any money uh, on air conditioning. Now that all has to come together fairly rapidly because we could get to next summer and limp and along on yeah. the systems that are this here. But, May or June would um, not be a good time to address that. And I also asked um, uh, Jay White to uh, opine on that a little bit before we make any uh, any profound decisions on money that we're going to spend. All right. So I think that I think that the air conditioning is something for the theater and for the people we have here working that should be, that needs to be addressed before summer, I feel. And I think that at one of our discussions, Jill, you agreed. And I did agree that we should ask Jay White for an idea of the cost of going forward with certain levels of things right now. And I can tell you that I wasn't expecting that by January 31st we'd be spending 
$26,000. And um, that I, I need to, to think about and talk about. And is there any possibility, maybe Frank knows this, that with what we have here for air conditioning that we sort of limped along with this summer, the heat pump situation would be helpful in those regards. I hear about heat pumps all the time and I don't know a thing about them. Well, in terms of the front of the building, um, the air conditioning in the general office when I arrived here in August, with the exception of the office that I was in, was, was reasonably functional. Uh, instead of replacing the large compressor upstairs at 50 some odd thousand dollars, um, I also got a quote from uh, a company that controlled technology and controlled whatever it is that we've talked to before um, about doing some heat pumps for the front of the, for the front office area, which would be somewhere less than fifteen thousand uh, dollars, and those would. The, I don't want to get into a long discussion about heat pump technology, but heat pumps uh, function as air conditioners and as heaters. So you would have both. Uh, they'll function as heat down to about, uh, oh, zero, 20, somewhere between 20 and zero. Uh, they're fully functional, and then your, your uh, regular uh, boilers are going to have to come on and take care of it. In the same way with air conditioning, uh, they'll keep the office at a comfortable temperature for a lot less money than, than the big compressor. And again, if, if, if we were doing major things in this building in the next five years, it would not be prudent to spend big money for a compressor upstairs that you're going to end up uh, doing something else with because that that's in the back of the mezzanine seating in the upstairs if, if you, if you yeah. do the building. So, I mean, it's decisions like this that um, even a limited master plan would help you make because you just, you just don't want to spend money um, needlessly. And what about theater? Um, yes, Angela. Sorry. Well, Mary, first of all, thank you very much for mentioning the uh, comment about the air conditioning because both from a working experience and from a patron experience, it is a very important thing. And I, I agree that spending money in a prudent way is a really, you know, that's the way we want to go. I wonder if there's a way that we could have as part of the plan something that you referenced that we have a dialogue about what immediate issues do we have that we would like to have considered that might be incorporated into that? So that as we're talking about the master plan, the big stuff, we can also have some line items for what are safety issues that we might want to address? What are air conditioning patron experience issues that we might want to address? Maybe have the plan be updated or whatever enhanced so that it includes that. Maybe that's a conversation that has to be with our architect and with Katie, maybe it's a more of a, a group conversation. So. Yeah, I, I, I like that too. And it's sort of what Frank just alluded to as well. And could I just, Jill, yes. uh, my concern oh, is this, um, this summer if we, if we need to replace air conditioning, the master plan is going to have no bearing on that if the theater needs air conditioning, correct? Correct. It's going to have to be replaced one way or so the other. It, it would, I think it would help you make the decision. Are we looking for a inexpensive temporary fix, or can we can we build something? Or is this part of the building not going to be changed if that's what the town has agreed? Um, and so maybe we start building the whole thing. And I'm frankly involving Jay in such conversations right now. We'll know the answer to that. Well, I, I, I think that, you know, I'm concerned that we're going to be spending money on that and money on air conditioning for master plan. Um, I just, I, I don't think this is the right time for it. I think we need to get more, of the, more comments from the residents of Woodstock. So I'd like to speak to that because, um, one of the things... Jill, you're out of order. Jill, you're out of order. 
I just think that, you know, we've done that with other, the EDC's done that. I think we need to get more citizens involved before we make a decision on what way we're going to go. I think that's, I, I think we need to do that. Um, so one of the things that the visioning project has done and came up with is to, or one of their key things that was important was to safeguard our iconic landmark. And the town hall is considered one of those landmarks. So many people, up to 600 people contributed to that work for, those, for the input to those comments. I don't think that um, for myself, I'm opposed to a master plan and anything. I just think it's a little too early. We've got a lot of other projects that are coming up. We have a pro 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 program for uh, replacing the emergency services building. We have schools that are, are barking at our door. Um, we got sewer plan issues. Um, I just think that we need to uh, take a little more time and uh, I like what you said. I think we to take a little more time and uh, get through this and a little more community involvement as to what we really want to see this building be uh, for the future. And um, I'd like to see the monitors go up. I'd like to see painting of the beams that were suggested be done. Uh, there's some brickwork that needs to be done on the west side. Those ramps that are out there were suggested in Jay's first report to be removed because the splash from the roof is creating the, 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 the damage to the bricks. Uh, I'd like to see us kind of get together and get our, our maintenance uh, items in order and move on with this, but at a little slower pace and further discussion maybe at the annual town meeting. So I just want to put a counter to that, just a different viewpoint. That one of the things that the master plan will do is come up with a number that will give us some idea of what this project might even cost. I thoroughly understand that, like but I think it's a little too early right now with the other. But may I finish, please? As you asked me to do before, as you asked me to be quiet. <coughs> I think that a sensible way to make decisions about money is to put everything on the table at the same time. So as we're putting on the table what the emergency services building is going to cost, we could put on the table what the town hall renovation might cost. We could put on the table what improving our roads might cost. And then we take the big, the one big, big look and say, how do we pay for all of this? Yes, we can't do the town hall for five or six years, but we can do the emergency services building first. But at least you know what your num what the numbers are that you're talking about, and you can start spreading out your your costs. Okay. So to do a master plan doesn't say we're going to do this next year at all. It just says what are we talking about? May I respond to some uh, to the comment that Butch made about waiting till town meeting? I don't think we can wait that long to work on air conditioning for the theater yeah. for next summer. I think that should be an active... We have money in the budget for that. Okay. That I think we need to move on because waiting till March... Yeah. That's, that's not what I was suggesting. Good. Thank you. We have, we have money in the budget for Good. those repairs. Um, Wendy was raising her hand. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to say what Jill was going to say, actually, or what she said, which is that a plan isn't necessarily taking action. It's something that we can do simultaneously with other work, and it just informs us so that we can make a better decision in the end. So I think it's important to move ahead with the planning so that we can make a decision down the road. Well, I agree. I agree that the plan is important. I think we need to get more people, more of the townspeople, involved with going forward, getting their thoughts, than okay. just just the than just the group that's very passionate about it right now. 
I have a question. But we'll just... There is a group passionate about it. And so another thing to throw into the discussion is that um, people react best when they have an idea in front of them. People don't usually create something from nothing. So having drawings and concepts might be actually very helpful for getting more input and discussion. Thank you. So I have a question. I mean, what do you mean by, by community input? Because I've been working on a committee for a year. There was a bunch of people. Um, when the first initial meetings, there was like 30 people. We broke up into different committees. There was like three or maybe four different committees with lots of people. Then we had another meeting. I mean, what's your metric for community input? Townspeople. I mean, you know, this. These were townspeople. Right, I understand that. But now we're talking about spending up to $26,000 for something that we don't even know if the people want to pay for it. I see. Yeah. So I, I, that's my concern. I don't think I don't think this is the right time to get into a very detailed. I'm a town person plan. and a I town resident, I, and I'm here to support the the planning for right. to make town hall better because there's a lot of potential in this town and I see a lot of things getting kicked down the road and I think that action is prudent and I think that having plans is prudent and I think that getting community involved like you say we need to we need a visual um, and just to go on the fact that there was a number of meetings in the past we also did a town-wide survey it was part of the visioning um, action so we have attempted to reach out and as you know um, you know people will respond when they're asked but sometimes they need to have something to respond to and so far they've responded to very abstract questions about what do they care about what's important to them and they've answered that and all those things have pointed to the importance of this building um, to the town not only as a architectural structure but also as a facility where um, the government can take place and where performing arts can take place so I think we've heard from the community that this is the direction we want to go to and that's what led to us asking Jay White to come up with this concept and so the next step is for us to go back to the town and bring them something concrete that they can react to so up to now they've only been responding to an idea now they would like to see something that's how we feel we're moving this forward in a judicious and thoughtful way and I think that it's also important to know that if we want to build something that's lasting and of quality we're going to have to spend money with people who are professionally equipped to help us move along and also um, can help us spend our money uh, in, a, in a wise and economic and efficient way Okay, any further discussion? We're getting, we're not making much progress this evening. Should we um, propose to table this for this night, for tonight? Should we table it for tonight and discuss it when next month? Beyond that, you know, we we're entering capital budget time and yeah. all of these things, so. That would be my I'm not sure what we did. Well, I, 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 yeah, I think if we table it and maybe get Jay White to come in here and, you know, just explain exactly what he's going to do. It's I not agree. A month isn't going to make a lot of difference. So, what the timing difference? What the timing difference is going to make is that we'll have um, less time to present it to the community for um, a town hall discussion. Um, all right. I think Jay has actually, Jay has actually um, proposed quite clearly what he is going to do, and you were all at the meeting where you voiced considerable support for going forward with such an idea. I, uh, it's uh, my confusion, delay it. Jill, my, my confusion lays in the removal of the stage in in this memo that's um, October 9th he certainly talks about that and I I did not come away from any of that discussion thinking that that was a given and I, I know I read that somewhere just today I saw that 
Did I make a motion? Yeah, I, well, I did, yes, to table it. What? Yes. Um, it's Wendy again, Jill. I really think time is of an essence. Um, I agree with what Jill said. If we wait a month, then what we're doing is denying the townspeople an opportunity to have a thoughtful conversation about this before they make a decision at town meeting. I think it's important for us to get back to them. We hear all the time that we're all about talk and no action. We've been talking, we've heard them, and we're trying to respond to their, to their desires. And the way the timetable works, with town meeting only happening once a year, unless you're willing to have a special town meeting in the middle of the year, is that we are then locked into a budget cycle that could potentially delay us another year. So there's no reason really to not move ahead with the uh, planning process. I have one more thing to say which I think is actually Jill, important. Jill, hang. Jill, somebody's speaking ahead of you, Jill. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So, Go ahead. so the architect, um, what he presented, talked about using the building as is. So keeping a, a, a more functional theater, making it ADA compatible, keeping the meeting rooms that we want, making uh, offices available for the townspeople. So he's talking about using the exact same, <coughs> uh, creating the building so it uses the exact same uses that we are using today. Right, that's a big conversation, there's a big part of the conversation is, is that um, it's going to be the exact same use. So Ray, when you asked, like, what do the townspeople want to use it for? I mean, it's for meetings, it's for the, uh, the theater. Okay. Then I will, withdraw, I will withdraw my motion to table um, because it didn't get a second and it seems to be going nowhere, but I'm not prepared at this time to make another motion. Jill? Jill? No, oh, yes. Do we have to go, um, I, was, uh, what, what, I just I got a question for you. Do we have to go all in for $26,000? Can we put a cap on what he does? Um, I don't know the answer to that question. I, I think know that we don't want to stop between, we don't want to stop between step three because that's the step that gives us the cost. Um, Brent, do you have an opinion on that? Well, I was going to say after what we saw tonight about the manager's job here, I think we ought to refer this to the manager to negotiate with Jay, Jay White. That's right, we're not in charge. It says right there he's in charge of the buildings. That's right. Jill, you're out of a job. Ray, uh, would you be happy if if we could work out how what this might look like for the $16,000? Is that what you're suggesting? Yeah, I do. I would. And I think you could do that because we we really don't need the five thousand dollars worth of renderings uh, at this point. Um, that could be a, a kind of a step uh, a later step. The construct the step three construction estimates are important, and I think those could be developed certainly within sixteen thousand dollars between the design of the master between the computerized drawing of the existing condition and the design of the master plan. Um, I think 16. So I would, uh, I would entertain a motion that we uh, have the town manager negotiate with Jay White in, in a price not to exceed $16,000 to come up with a plan, master plan, uh, to present to the to committee. So moved. Motion's been made and seconded. Seconded. Seconded that we we have uh, Frank negotiate with Jay White to come up with a proposal not to exceed a master plan not to exceed sixteen thousand dollars to present. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you, Jim. You support. Thank you. 
government that works. This is inspiring. I, that was a great compromise. It Thank you. was. Yeah. That was really great. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to it, right? Here. Well, it's, uh, it's get late. <laughs> okay. You know, it always scares me when they say uh, 16 to 23. Uh, next thing you know, it's 27. 27. That's why you have your own. I didn't expect this. Right, and I paid attention to the class tonight. He's in charge of buildings. Thank you. 4-0 Astros, bottom of the eighth. Okay. All right, where are we going from here? Okay, we're going on to a liquor license. No, 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 no. Oh, we got oh. a manager's oh. report. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Boy. Stick around. You're going to listen to the manager's report. Karen, we have the house. That's everybody part of serving on the library committee. You have to hear what the manager has to say. Oh. Frank, you have the floor. <laughs> no, not, not necessarily. The press is still doing its work. You're out of order, sir. <laughs> okay, I'll be reasonably brief, like I that. hope. The, uh, in no particular order, budget worksheets are in the hands of department heads. We'll be, make, we'll be meeting this week and next week to fine-tune projections. As early as the week of the 28th, we could begin the morning meetings with uh, select board members um, as we uh, fine-tune the budget. Uh, we're also asking department heads to uh, opine as to what they think capital needs are going to be so that we can get to the capital budget committee as, fair, as rapidly as possible. Uh, under buildings, you, uh, you just dealt with the town hall, which was my first on the, on the situation. Uh, the EMS building cost estimate should be finished this week, and the next steps uh, will include some Public tours, public forums, anything else, David? Nope. Um, as far as I know, nothing more than that right now. As we approach budget season, um, Jill and Ray did a walking inventory of the sidewalks and did some assessments. Uh, we had a, uh, a meeting of the three of us, and we'll be recommending in the budget process that we include uh, an amount probably 40,000 uh, we have 37 in this year's budget but maybe 40 45 thousand dollars that would be used annually to improve the uh, the asphalt sidewalks concurrent with that we'll also get some money in to uh, fix uh, fix uh, curbing on, a, on an incremental basis uh, there's money enough in the world to do them all at once the um, <laughs> I have not had the conversation with Ken yet, but we'll be bringing forward a, a paving amount that, again, incrementally over the next five years, we'll put X number of dollars into paving every year and pick the appropriate village street or uh, the town street. Pick the appropriate street anyway that needs asphalt and, and do it. Um, we'll also pay close attention to Class Two paving. Uh, which comes up, we have several class two roads um, in the town and village. Based on the weather forecast, well, based on, on a lot of events, uh, the company that was supposed to come in and shim the main street uh, proposed to come in last week on Wednesday. Um, I thought I was going to have to get a straitjacket for Jeff. Um, <laughs> but, but, I, I sent him off to the synagogue to, to pray for us because we, we needed it. Um, in my conversation with Blacktop, they said if we got three or four days of, of warm weather in the next couple of weeks, uh, they would consider coming in. But as John will tell you, uh, when you're shimming, you're only using a small amount of pavement. The, uh, the tech coat, or the uh, Whatever we put down ahead of the, the paving tech code. Um, if it's cold, it's just not going to work. And the first time we plow it, we're going we're to bring it up. Um, so you may not see the shim code happen until spring. We've, we've got to have warm pavement. Frank, I have the, pu the public should know that this was scheduled in September. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. It, was, so it should have been done back in the It summer. was scheduled in September. 
yeah. and that uh, they, uh, they, 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 their personnel weren't unable to fulfill. And it didn't rain the day they were coming. And it didn't rain the day they were supposed to come. It was supposed to, and it didn't. It did. okay. That's right. So, you know, having them come last week at the peak of foliage season uh, and uh, have one-way traffic, no. Yeah. Um, Waste, uh, wastewater facilities, uh, Stantec uh, will have the uh, alternatives analysis on South Woodstock by the end of October. Um, the Taftville uh, wastewater facility, the repair work has been done. The painters are due to start tomorrow. Lincoln Bridge, David and I were out there this morning. Um, construction continues. I can't tell you much more. Than, uh, than the fact that I wouldn't plan on being across that bridge until after Christmas, at least. The wastewater treatment facility re-roofing project is underway as of today. Um, the manager search process, the search committee is met. We'll begin its process next week when they get the resumes. Um, we'll hopefully begin the process to winnow it down to 10 or 12 the week of the of, of, uh, November 4th and we'll begin the round the first round of interviews on that group that will pare it down to the group that ultimately ends up with you the uh, elected officials and one other issue that uh, I, I'm trying to figure out from where what Carl said about manager authority so I'm going to work this by you just to see what manager authority is um, as you all know, we, the health insurance for our employees is a uh, relatively expensive item. Uh, we've solicited quotes from our current carrier, which is Blue Cross Blue Shield, uh, as well as MVP. Um, under the uh, current offering situation in Vermont, plan offerings are virtually identical, varying only in price based on our current census, we can offer MVP at about the same premium cost we've incurred this year. Uh, the same offering from Blue Cross would increase our cost by $55,000. Um, we're going to meet with MVP on Friday to confirm our analysis, but uh, my opinion is that, uh, and I've run it by the department heads, um, my opinion is we'll probably switch to MVP this year as the plan offering for the uh, for the employees. Uh, I just can't see spending another fifty-five thousand dollars, which is a majority on the taxpayer. So, um, and I don't know on that plan of things whether that was under my authority or, but I'd at least like you folks to nod that you think it's not a bad idea to save fifty-five grand. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. Good idea. Would you like a motion on that? It's a great idea uh, to save 55 grand. The, uh, we are still working, I guess Serena's gone, but uh, Jill and Serena and I have been working on the uh, personnel policy manual. A lot of it is just bringing uh, things into compliance with the VLCT basic uh, best practice model. Uh, We'll be meeting with department heads and employees soon and have a document hopefully ready for your consideration by the December meeting. The one other area that uh, I hope you all read something about, um, because it is going to be a serious issue, the emerald ash bore. Um, that is a parasitic to trees. Um, flying creature that is gradually moving into Vermont. There's been a half a dozen spots at this point, I think, where they've determined that it, is, it in fact started its infestation. It is fatal to the ash tree. Um, we met with Don Wheeler, uh, who was our tree warden this afternoon, uh, to discuss the threat, and I was happy to learn that he has been participating with other town tree wardens in the southern part of Windsor County. 
Um, one of my uh, prime individuals over in Ludlow is, was a chair. His new passion is the Emerald Ash Board. He's, he's done a great job of organizing uh, the Southern Windsor County and Don is, is part of that group. Um, I've asked him to attend, and I trust you'll agree, I'd like him to attend the next meeting to kind of brief you on the issue. There's, there's two things you can, well, there's three things you can do. Um, you can do nothing, and if the insect actually gets here, uh, we'll lose the ash trees that we have in the town and village. Uh, and I'm talking at this point on only on municipal property. Um, whatever we learn and whatever we propose should be passed on to the folks that have ash trees on their, on their personal property, but we can only be re directly responsible for, for trees on town property. Um, you can do nothing and they'll die. Uh, you can proactively cut them down and sell the lumber. Um, and Don is going to do some analysis on how many uh, solvable log trees we have uh, in, the, in the village, uh, in the town. Um, and then there are some treatments that you can do every couple of years that supposedly will keep the, the uh, insect from attacking your, your trees. That is reasonably expensive. However, if there were enough citizens in town that also wanted to treat some of their trees, uh, you'd be able to get the best price for the, for the treatments at every two-year treatment. And anything I say beyond this is probably knowledge that I don't have, and Don will give you some really great stuff uh, at the November meeting if you agree to have him on the agenda. And that concludes my part, Mr. Chairman. If there's questions, we also gave you a, a, a three-month financial oh, yeah. income expenses. Um, for the record, as you are all aware, uh, we're on an accrual basis. So while well, the uh, year-to-date revenue for taxes, that is the amount uh, somewhere near what we've billed, it may not necessarily be the amount that we've taken in. Um, the expenditures are on a uh, actual expended basis revenue uh, in certain cases uh, is uh, accrual. <coughs> and if anybody wants exhaustive detail, I have that in my office and I'd be happy to see any of you. As you know, my door is always open. That's it, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Can I ask one quick question? Sure. Um, is there an opportunity for public participation in the man the uh, manager search? Um, are we sh is there a, is there any mechanism for sharing the, some information about the candidates that we're looking at? Uh, Mary is the chairman of the search committee. I think she can probably tell you about that. At the advice of the LCT, for a number of reasons. We've all signed a confidentiality agreement on the search committee, and um, we have to honor that. And it was at their recommendation for to um, respect the privacy of any individuals who might be applying. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you are aware of the composition of the committee, sir. Um, I, I saw it at some point. I don't think I could reel off the names of everyone. <laughs> but yeah, there's but a select they, board member, a trustee, right, right. and then eight essentially members of the community. So on that initial search committee, you're fairly well represented by your peers. Okay, yeah, no, that, thanks. I, I believe it's the Thanks. Um, so as Frank mentioned in his report, we are uh, about ready to start the budget process. The department heads will be turning them in, and in the past we have uh, met with those department heads to go over their budget, and then we've had meetings to do our budget, and in most cases in the past that's been uh, an 8 o'clock meeting uh, in the mornings for an hour to work on those, those budget books. Um, so I thought it might be, because time's passing on, next meeting is November. 
when we're all together again to come up with some kind of a an idea or rather we want to meet uh, once a week uh, twice a week uh, twice a month uh, how we want to set up uh, doing mornings uh, or if we want to do mornings uh, to be prepared when 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 he calls us to start the process uh, so if anybody's got any thoughts about that I think we should at least pick some times rather we want to meet Mondays and Thursday mornings or we want to meet Wednesday morning only or we want to meet eight o'clock in the morning or we want to meet four o'clock in the morning or uh, no <laughs> <laughs> no four o'clock so, uh, um, eight o'clock did you say nine o'clock in the morning eight o'clock I eight said but but for the staff here it's usually better about eight eight fifteen to let them get the doors open at least and that's but, right but uh, some of us are here at seven thirty, so eight o'clock is a fun time. Okay. Yeah, I'm up. Yeah. So you know, do you want to meet? Uh, start out once a week and then see where it goes from there, and add well, another day or. Well, Frank suggested the week of the twenty eighth, and um, you know that's the end of October, and that's plenty early. And if we if we met, I think that's a Monday. Monday morning, the 28th at 8 o'clock, and set up for the next week. And in a few weeks, we'll see how it's going. And if it's not going well, um, then we might have to go to two meetings a week or maybe even three. Which but 8 o'clock, yep. Monday, the 28th, join us. Works <laughs> <laughs> good. Uh, I can't do the 28th, but I could do the 29th. All right, if, it, if it's at 8 o'clock in the morning, I can do the 29th. I have to leave town that day at 9.30. I'm not sure what my schedule is. But. Well, let's pencil that in and we'll... Pencil it in. We're Thank penciling you, you in, Jill. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. You're so welcome. So now we have... Uh, we have some work for the... Commissioners. I would like to be able to the Casco. Oh, yeah. Casco Mercantile. Yeah. LLC. Uh, liquor license. Formerly known as the Tashville Country Store. Store. This is quite exciting. Is that where you buy a liquor? They paid the fee, I guess we could yeah. make the motion to approve it. All the ducks in order there. <laughs> Everything's okay. Yeah. All right. The date. It's not November first yet, so they're <laughs> as long as they get in one of them first, they're good. All right. I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve liquor license for Tashville Mercantile LLC. I second it. The motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Ayes have it. All right. Okay. That concludes that part of the meeting. Uh, John, you got some. Uh, no, none of that. No, okay. Uh, Board of Sewer Commissioners. So you all have that in front of you. Mm -hmm. Curious and wondered why Christine had a payroll deduction. Um, some employees have been a request that Jill so that the money is um, there for different tax purposes. Some people have their taxes taken out of their payroll. Yeah. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so I move we approve the abatement. Uh, $539. Five cents. Is there a second oh, no. to that? That's not the amount. No, the, no I was looking for that. not the amount. It is $571.41. That's the, um, is that the penalty in it now? See, that's the doesn't really say what the abatement is. It says it's asking to have the interest on the yeah, sewer account yeah. abated. 
and I don't see where that, but that interest is in a line. The item. amount is not indicated. Is it the three times five fifty three and then three times eight oh nine? Is it the difference between a five thirty nine oh five and a five seventy one forty one? Is that it? Precise enough if we say the interest payments? Yeah. Penalty, yes. Close Penalty enough. and interest Close enough. accrued. All right. So, what we're approving is the interest should be uh, deducted from, uh, from her sewer bill. Correct? Correct. Yes, yes. Correct. All right. So, there's a motion to do that. I second it. Motion's been made to second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any other business to come before this board tonight? Okay. Approval of the minutes for September 17th, the joint meeting, and September 17th minutes for the regular meeting. I make a motion to approve both. I reviewed those minutes. I make a motion to approve both sets of minutes. Second. 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 I have it. Well, we have some expense warrants to review, and I make a motion that as soon as that is completed, we adjourn the meeting. I'll second that. Motion's been made and seconded that we adjourn after signing the necessary papers. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Aye.